My parents got divorced when I was seven days old. So, like most kids, my first word was mama, but my next five were told me to tell you. And my dad went on to, to get married five times. Now, I, I don't know if you've ever been to someone's fifth wedding, but uh, uh, no one can take it seriously. Um, everyone's in Crocs. Uh, it, it's BYOB. And by the fourth step, Mom, I was so bitter. I was just like, I'd learn your name, sweetheart, but you'll be gone by Christmas. <laughs> and that was a lollipop, because I was nine. So... All of that left me <laughs> with very mixed feelings about marriage um, until I met a woman in college named Laura. And Laura, she looked like a young Audrey Hepburn, but like with the neuroses of an Annie Hall. Uh, she, she had these big, not, not, not like sexy librarian glasses, more like helpful librarian glasses. And they, they magnified these very small blue eyes that would, would just disappear when she smiled, and she smiled every time I walked in a room. I loved her, and I, I never wanted her to look at me the way that my mom looks at my dad. So after we graduated, I broke up with her. <laughs> she moved to LA, and, and, and rather than process any of my feelings, I went backpacking around Europe for three months. I, and I went all over Europe. I, I, I started in, uh, in, in Sicily, then I went to Rome, uh, Berlin, Amsterdam, Paris, back to Amsterdam, uh, <laughs> I, Dublin, Lisbon. This is not an accurate map, but the, the final stop was Interlaken, Switzerland. All I could think about was Laura. Like, did, did I make a mistake? Should I call her, beg forgiveness, ask her to marry me? And that's when I saw a brochure for skydiving. And I thought, oh, I'll just do this instead. Because uh, uh, Switzerland is actually the number one place to skydive, according to the brochure. So I, I signed up to go tandem jumping the next day. Tandem jumping, that's where you're strapped to someone who's brave on your behalf. And uh, uh, I, I was very nervous. Um, so instead of going to bed that night, I decided to Skype with Laura. Now, we, we were broken up, but she was still generous enough to, to talk to me, you know, if I was having, like, an existential crisis. So, you know, we talked a lot. And <laughs> with the time difference, it's probably, like, 6 in the morning when she answers her Skype, and I'm, I'm on the screen freaking out. Like, tell me I don't have to go skydiving. And this is the first she's heard of any of this. So she's like, honey, deep breaths. You, <laughs> you don't have to go skydiving. And I was like, no, I need you to push me, please. And she was like, oh, I, I misread that. Um, uh, you, you, you totally should go skydiving. And I was like, why? Because you want me to die? And we just, I'm a lot. And <laughs> we just went back and forth and back and forth until finally I burst into tears. And I was like, all right, I don't know if I'm going to do it. But if I do, and if the parachute doesn't go off, I just want you to know that you will be the last thing that I'm thinking about. Which probably isn't true. I mean, the last thing I'll think is just like, ah! <laughs> but, but I had to wrap up the call because the, the van was there to take me to the airfield because we'd been Skyping for seven hours. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I, I said goodbye. I, I kissed the camera. It was gross. And I, <laughs> I, get, I get into the van. It's one of these big vans. No seatbelts in the van. And the driver can see that I've been <laughs> crying. So he's like, dude... Dude, you are more likely to die on this car ride right now than you are skydiving. I'm like, great, more things to be scared about. <laughs> they, they dress me up in this full-body neon orange jumpsuit, which I think is like so, you know, if the parachute doesn't go off, they can find my body in the woods. <laughs> and um, I, I have to crawl onto the, the plane. It's a tiny plane. It could fit on this stage. I think it was made by Hot Wheels. And... <laughs> We start, we start going up into the sky, and they strap me up uh, behind me to my tandem jumper. And it's this very, very cool Australian guy named Eben. And I get, I, I, to try to, like, get my mind off this, I, I just try to get to know him. I was like, uh, hey, Eben, you, uh, you, you married? And he was like, nah. And I was like, oh, uh, do you have a girlfriend or boyfriend? And he was like, nah. And I was like, oh, do, do you have any pets? And he was like, nah. 
If I disappeared, I don't think anyone would notice. <laughs> Time to jump. Boom! I'm scooting to the edge, straddled by a suicidal skydiver, I think. And right as my feet are hanging over the plane, that's when I decide, you know what? I'm not going to go skydiving. I don't care if there's no refunds. I'm going to cancel this. But then I think something snapped. I think something went off in my head because for the first time in my life, I heard a voice in my head that was not my own. And it said, you can't die, John Marco. You're the main character. <laughs> Three, two, one. We jumped. And guys... You have got to go skydiving. It was amazing. You have to go. I was, we, like, it was raining, but we were above the clouds, so I was, like, raining onto the rain. And, and then, and then the, you know, he even pulled the parachute, thank God. I'm Jewish, but just in case. And, um, <laughs> and then, then you, just, you just float. You just float for, like, like five, ten minutes. Uh, and it was this beautiful view of the Swiss Alps, just, like, just like snow and lakes. It was just, it was the first time in so long that I was, that I didn't have any distractions. It was just like me alone with my thoughts and even. And <laughs> it, it took falling miles above the Swiss Alps for me to go, what am I doing? Obviously, I love Laura. And, and if I, if I'm, Willing to jump out of a plane for no reason, I can certainly marry her for every reason in the world. So the, the, the moment we land, I threw up everywhere. I mean, it had been, it had been a long day. You've, you've heard. Very hard day for me personally. But the moment I, I, I clean up, I go to get my phone, I call Laura, she doesn't pick up. I call her again, she doesn't pick up. And I didn't find out until like months later, but the reason she wasn't picking up is because she was at a friend's birthday party where she was meeting for the first time her now husband. Because life does not wait until you're ready to jump. Thank you.